So there's some cool stuff happening here at Geek Fan Expo. If you're listening tonight, definitely try to come tomorrow. Saturday is going to be a big day. We're all doing panels. It's going to be excellent. But you know what? Let's start the show. Oh, my God. I, I don't even you... know if I can do this. Um. Okay. Um. He's right behind you. Oh, my God. Okay. Robert Paulson, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi, I'm Rob. Hi, I'm Lucas. Hi, Lucas. Nice, nice to, to see meet you. Connor. Oh, my God. Hello, sir. Okay. I am flipping out right now. Oh, dear. But I'm going to try my darndest well, tonight. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here, man. Okay, Thanks um, real fast, can you can you just do your Yakko Warner for us? Yes, I can. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. Hey, that was pretty easy. That's it? Wow. We got a hell of a crowd here tonight. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah drink up, Shriners. Uh. <laughs> That's us. You're laughing. That's a good sign. Oh. I don't know if you saw that earlier. When we were over there talking, he had to get up and leave oh. because he's actually been waiting since you were announced on the Geek Fan Expo. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh my gosh, no, really? No, yes. I'm, Conrad I'm a huge, is an aspiring I'm, voice actor himself. Which I'm oh. not. He's in radio yeah. right now. Good for you, Conrad. I'm so, doing my darndest. you know, you're his yeah. hero. Well, thanks, buddy. Uh, you're you're really yeah, his hero. It's, it's cool. So, yeah, Thank so you. you being here, in my opinion, and no offense to anybody else on the, that we've had so far, but I am probably the most excited that you're sitting at this table with us. So thank, thank you, you very, that very much. Very, very kind And of uh, let's get into the, the nitty-gritty because yeah. uh, the people, I mean, if you've grown up any time in the past 20, how, how, how long has your career expanded, first off? Well, it's not over yet, so... Yes, yeah, so from right now, now until... Yeah, I... Well, I've been making my living as a performer since I've been 19, and I'm 58, so I've been wow. doing this for almost 40 years, but my I haven't been doing animation. Animation, I've been, let's see, the first shows I did were G.I. Joe and Transformers, and that was 1983, so it's wow. been 31 years since I started doing cartoons, and, and I think I've been doing them exclusively, that is, with no live-action stuff for probably the last 20, so I've been... But I've been in L.A. since 1978 and doing cartoons since 1983. So wow. if you were born 1982 forward, odds are you've heard this gentleman's voice 81. in some way, yeah. shape, or form. Um, now, I already said that you did Yakko, which, did. which, yeah, which is amazing. Thank you very much. Um, what are some other uh, prominent roles that you Well, I, you might remember Pinky and the Brain, and I was the uh, stupider half, Pinky. Can I can I do can I do my narf for you? Please. I want I want I want you to tell me if this is okay. Okay, okay ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay, this is amazing. Oh by the God, way. I'm I super freaking out. Okay. Okay. I'm closing my eyes to enjoy the full compliment of your narf. I actually have a story about Piggy. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Know. Okay, gotta center myself. All right. Narf. <laughs> oh, that was that was great. <laughs> no, I could have sworn it was coming from me. You could tell. I better watch my ass because you're gonna steal that job. I'm freaking out. Okay. Anyway, sorry. So, uh, Pinky from Pinky and the Brain, yes. Yak Warner, both from the same show, um, oh. other stuff, sorry. Um, well, the same show. Was, I was also Dr. Scratch and Sniff in that show. Um, let's see. I was Raphael and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the original show. The original one that came out back right. in the day. And now... The Turtle, one we grew up with. The yes. you and my, and my kids, same thing. And now, it's really cool, is Turtles is back, and it's now on... Uh, Nickelodeon. Yeah, yes. and arguably as big as it's ever been. And now I'm Donatello. So yes. I'm, I'm getting That's another amazing. ride in the turtle van. And so your kids are as old as us? My kid is going to be 30 next week. Mm -hmm. So he grew up with the dad. Doing, how, what, how does, oh, how does he, that... It was great for both of us. I, I, I have to say I felt, I felt really bad for uh, the other fathers when my kid would take me to career day. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> because, you know, when it's like, hey, here's Jimmy's dad. He's a financial analyst. And here's Billy's dad. He's a cop. And here's... Karen's dad, she is a you know, he's a vet, and here's Ra Ashton's dad, and he's Raphael. <laughs> so that was pretty awesome. cool. Yeah, that was great fun, and it was really fun for me to have a little boy growing up being a, a turtle freak. And I have to uh, thank all of, and your parents, I'm sure, in particular. I have to thank all of the parents out there uh, of, of children who are now in their 30s for, That's um, awesome. yeah, for buying action figures because my kids' teeth are straight today as a result of your parents' generosity. Well, I I will say that uh, my family. No offense, but when they hear the word Ninja Turtle, they cringe yeah, because they I'm had sure. they bought me everything. Everything See, I had, my I had parents the, didn't. I only got the good guys. I had the yeah. Metro. So I, I had cool. I yeah. had the all four Ninja Turtles and every version of them, but they just sat around doing nothing, right? Because my parents refused to buy me bad guys for them to fight. Oh dear. No, See, I, I, I had all the I good guy the GI whole, Joes, the all the good guy Turtles. Man. I had all of my Bebop, well, I had Rocksteady. It's, I'm telling you, man, it's as big as it's ever been. I, yes. I am shocked. And, and I, I guess I shouldn't be because it's always kind of been around. But now with this new Nickelodeon iteration and Viacom's money and, and the, the secret, I believe, to the success of the new show 
is that the people who are making it are like 40. And so they love turtles and they get the mytho, the mythology. Yes, absolutely. They get the ethos and they are so uh, appreciative of the fans and they respect the fans a lot. So, I think that's why you've seen these these movies from our you know stuff that we grew our up generation, with. and yeah. then it's becoming movies is because those people understand totally what we like. Yeah, well, you're having, and it wasn't just somebody just shooting in the dark like a lot long time no, ago. No, you're it's, having fans create yes, this content. Right, that Absolutely. is a very unique it. circumstance when yeah. you have people who grew up watching it now are you know have control over the franchise. And I'm telling you what, man, if you watch the new Ninja Turtles show. On a 90-inch HD screen, it looks like a freaking Animation's movie. amazing. It no, it's like really, really movie. good. And the, 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 the we were talking about wonderful. the uh, 2007 mm -hmm. uh, that one was that a good came one out. Too. That was a good one too. That's the one I, my kid likes a lot. Nolan which, North was Raphael in that. Yeah, which was a, which was a, it was a great, it was and it was a continuation of the cinematic turtles, not the right. one really? that just came out. Right. Yeah, that was basically the fourth movie because if you look at the very end of it, um, they have like a little memento wall, and they had the, the exactly time, right. they had the time turner good from you, Conrad, Turtles yeah. in Time. They had the uh, the ooze cracked case. Yeah, so that was actually I did not know the continuation. That. It was of really kind of a cool homage yes. to the franchise. I agree. But I'm telling you, man, these people making it now, Sierra Nielli and Brandon Allman and their, their team are really good. And Sean Astin is now Raphael, and um, Seth Green is Leonardo. I'm Donatello, and Greg Sykes. My favorite Seth character. Seth Green is Thank everywhere. You. Seth Sorry. is cool. He's I'm a, a great Donatello guy. guy. I'm a well, Donatello thanks, guy. I'm a Donatello guy. Appreciate I'll, that. I was born I'll, I'll before be you, so I'm a Donatello <laughs> guy. You can't claim I can, that. I can, I can it came that. out the same time, so we probably viewed it at the same time. You can't just claim that because you're older. That's not how I had seniority TV works. First. There you go. I understood TV. We're going to see a turtle fight right here. I was advanced for a kid, all right? I stopped, but I was advanced for a little while. Sorry, we're fighting over which one of us is the bigger fan. I'm very flattered. Person you voice. Um, now others, uh, just off the top of my head, and like we have a little cheat sheet here. Um, and this is the one that uh, you were chopper, which you were I chopper, think is awesome. Yeah, we just did. We I just, just two weeks ago, we just did uh, Land Before Time thirteen. Oh really? my gosh, there's thirteen of them now. And you were, that was you in that as well. Uh, yeah, chopper, and also uh, oh, God, I was chopper in one of those, and also uh, Spike. Oh, Spike. I'm Spike okay. the... Um, yeah, the, the dinosaur... Yeah, the one that yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. All he does is go... Arr. Yeah. So I get to collect yeah. residual checks from going... <laughs> this is awesome. Great. Okay, this is the one I feel I feel like you should be really excited about. Dude, he was Pete Jr. in Goof Troop. Yeah, yes. I was PJ. <laughs> that... Oh, my so, God. that show, bro. Oh, he identified with that My freshman year. Excellent. We called our group of friends the Goof Troop. No way. So I'm not even kidding. Thanks. And um, Maximus was my favorite character, obviously. Yeah. I grew into Pete. <laughs> Thank you very much, man. I dug being PJ, and my dad was Pete, played by Jim Cummings, who is also Darkwing Duck and oh, wow. Wow. Dark Duck. Tasmanian Devil. That is insane. And Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. Yeah, yeah. I, I still have the drawing I did of of the Goof Troop guys in my office. It Thanks, stands, man. I did it my freshman year, and I, we were obsessed with the Goof Troop stuff. That was a cool show. I I, so show. all those Goof Troopers from high school. Look yeah, at this. How about I never that? noticed that are. the side by side comparison because it's crazy because obviously these voices sometimes get recycled into different characters. Yeah. So you doing that just now, and then me looking at the paper, you're Pete Junior. You're PJ is Carl Weezer. Yeah, if you listen to Pete Jr. and then you make it a little younger and oh, a little awesome. quieter and shyer, <laughs> then it's Carl Weezer. Yeah, I like Carl Weezer a lot. I um, remember Carl Weezer. He probably will never ever get laid. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, you know, life imitates art. I don't need her anymore. So. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I did Carl... That actually, when you uh, Jimmy Neutron was an incredibly clever show. It was very bright, very sharp. Even the the Sheen spinoff as uh -huh. well. Yeah. Because the then they had I I did a character called Doppy, which was Carl Weezer as a doppelganger alien with four eyes, and he talked the same way. Hi. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Then we did Planet Sheen. That was a spinoff, and then uh, the, and then Jimmy Neutron the movie did made a, I don't know hundred million bucks and got nominated for an Oscar. So it was a pretty cool thing. Amazing. Whole, cool franchise. And uh, you, so you work with Nickelodeon pretty extensively. A lot. A they, lot. Nickelodeon has been, been treating very well since since basically the year 2000. They had me on Fairly Odd Parents, Cat Scratch, Danny Phantom, Jimmy Neutron, Planet Sheen, I Turtles. I love all of those. And yeah. I just saw that you were Jack Barnyard. Fenton. Barnyard. Yeah, Jack Fenton and Danny Phantom. That was me. Um, and I also played another character that sounded a lot like PJ called the Box Ghost. <laughs> oh, and, uh, that's right. That's and I was Technus, who sounded a lot. An awful lot like Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, I actually thought it was Gilbert Gottfried. Thank you. Yeah. So, what was that? Th that's Technus. That's one of the ghosts on Danny, Danny Phantom. I haven't seen Danny Phantom. Then they had me on, um, Butch did another show, another Detroiter, Butch Hartman did, uh, uh, 
Tough Puppy. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, I didn't watch much of that Back one. at the Barnyard, I did that show. Yeah, it was Nickelodeon has been remarkably sweet to me. Yeah. Now, I, w- I want to go back, because you said that uh, Jim Butcher, who uh, was also from uh, from the Michigan area, that area, state of Michigan, uh, you're you're a homeboy, that you're from around I am. here. I was born in Livonia. That's amazing. And I went to junior high school in um, Rochester and high school in Grand Blanc. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've been cool. out of here. I've been in L.A. for 36 years, but yeah, I was born and raised in Michigan. My parents retired at Grayling. I have friends uh, and relatives all over the place. Are very close cousins in Harper Woods and Dearborn, and yeah, I've been. We also okay. have friends now in Hazel Park from Lucas Thank and myself. You. There, if, is there still a racetrack in Hazel Park? There is. I wow. actually live right down the street. Yeah, from that. literally, I can walk there. there. I remember yeah. the racetrack in Hazel Park. We have an ice rink too now, so yeah. we're 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 moving up in the world. Huge Red Wing um, fan. My hero. I was is yeah, Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe. I saw that. That's amazing. So who'd win in a fight real fast? Would it be Gordy Howe or Wayne Gretzky? Oh, are you kidding me, Gordy? Yeah. Poor Wayne. Gordy'd break him in half. That's why Wayne always had uh, Dave Semenko around him and Marty McSorley because, you know, <laughs> I love Wayne. He's, 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 he's a great w- human being. Well, he's the great. He's, he's not a Wayne Gretzky. But he's not no, a fighter. I mean, a fight no. between Gordon. No, no, no. That's <laughs> a, yeah, that would be in, over pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, do you have, are you allowed to talk about any upcoming projects? Do you have sure. anything else coming up? Um, I'm working on, I do a really great show for little kids on, actually, two of them um, on uh, Disney Junior called Doc McStuffins. And another one called Happy Huggle Monsters. I do a character called Toodles on uh, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. I don't really do that much little kid stuff, but when I do, it's really fun. The, the stuff on, on Disney Junior is very cute. A lot. We just got picked up for our fourth season of Ninja Turtles. Nice. That's well huge. deserving, by the way. Um, I'm doing uh, a really fun project with Randy Rogel, who wrote pretty much all of the songs from Animaniacs that everybody loves. Yeah. Uh, we're Love doing the, the state capital songs. Yeah, and the, and yeah. the countries. Yeah. And we're doing um, <laughs> live shows now with orchestras around the country. And the first show we're doing is with the Denver Symphony Orchestra three weeks from tonight in, in Denver with 80 pieces. And it's going to be all of the Animaniac songs. It's going to be Tress McNeil, who is Dot, Jess Harnell, who is Wacko, and myself. And we're going to be performing um, Animaniac songs with an oh my gosh, eighty piece enough. orchestra on a huge screen, so is the cartoons will be. Yeah, we'll we're going to probably turn it into a tour. All, that, I, I certainly would love to. That would yeah. be amazing. We it's, need it's to go to the orchestra. A, Absolutely. Yeah, it's a pretty remarkable thing to see with a giant orchestra and a huge screen with the cartoons playing. It's very entertaining. So that's we're working awesome. on that. I got Lots chills just now. Right? Yeah, it's pretty. I did. Pretty wild yeah, to get see. Those chills that you got, that's how I feel the entire time I'm sitting next to Robert Coulson, man. <laughs> Thanks, you don't buddy. understand. So funny. here's a question but, I want to ask you for you. How do you start off as a voice actor? Like, how do you, what is, what is, you know, you what's just, your, how do you do minds want yeah, to know. Yeah. In, in my me. case, and, and really when you, when you name any of the actors that any of you or your audience would enjoy, Billy West, Tress McNeil, um, Ma, you know, Mark Hamill, Maurice LaMarche, John DiMaggio, we all started out, in my case it was music and I then became a theater actor. Um, Maurice did his, was a stand-up. John DiMaggio did stand-up. Nancy Cartwright did theater. We all pretty much started out doing live theater performance, performance, um, and then it kind of morphed because voice acting—it's just acting. It's not—it's not about. I mean, you have to come up with voices, but it's not just about funny voices. So when somebody says, "Hey, I do a great Fred Flintstone," well, that's that's great, but that's not what makes the characters live. It's it's really about um, making really interesting decisions and and being thoughtful about characters. So my suggestion to anybody, do a lot of improv, um, do live performance. Um, I really, really encourage that because it is about acting. It's not just about doing funny voices. That gets old really quick. If you do funny voices, it becomes basically a parlor trick. Yeah. And everybody can say, narf, and, and, uh, and, oh, and, and uh, you know, um, um, smarter than the average bear. But to really create characters so that they interact with others and make them so they become beloved and, and thoughtful. It's about acting and creating. It's not just Absolutely. about doing funny voices. So, yeah, I would suggest people to continue their I think you and I both started skill. off in theater. Right? Um, yes, in that's high school. Big, I was in my drama club. Yeah, you went, you went you television, went, I went radio. Yeah, yeah so. that's, a, that's, a, that's a big part of it. Um, and now the competition is just enormous because there's a lot of celebrity talent involved in doing uh, um, voices for cartoon shows and movies. Um, on Ninja Turtles, uh, you know, we have, like I said, we've got Sean Astin and and Seth Green, and before Seth, for the first two seasons of Turtles, um, Jason Biggs was Leonardo, and he ultimately had to leave because he's doing Orange Is the New Black. Um, but 
you know, we have lots of celebrity talent. Gilbert Gottfried is on the show. Um, uh, um, oh God, um, I'm sorry. Uh, Ro Roseanne Barr is on the show. Oh, really? So yeah, there are a lot that. of celebrities that do animation now, and, and it really isn't. You know, it's it's a huge, huge, huge uh, talent pool that you have to compete with. So if you're just doing wacky voices, then you know you're going to kind of get lost in the shuffle. Very cool. Now you um. You started off as theater, as you said, and you've done some uh, live action, and then, and then you basically make your money now doing uh, voice acting. I would assume that voice acting is m more difficult because there's only one aspect of, of you being noticed. You can only you only have the audio. Yeah, right? I mean, I suppose you can make that argument. I don't know that it's more difficult. It's 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 not as time consuming, certainly. I mean, I've done a lot of TV and movie stuff, and most of it is hurry up and wait. You know. You get the, the shot right and set up the shot and all that. With voice work, it, it, it's done quicker. The cool thing I like about it is I'm not limited by being an average-looking white guy. I get hired for things with my voice that I would never be considered for on camera because I'm not a celebrity talent, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I guess that that it can be a little more... I don't know if difficult's the right word. It can be... Tricky? Trickier because... That's a great word. Thank you, Conrad. Because it... Um, because you can't rely on your good looks or the size of your boobs or the hair you've got or however you know what I yeah, mean. Yeah, Lucas, keep your boobs in check. Yeah, you got right? nice man boobs, man. And I'm right, <laughs> I'm right there with you, my friend. Um, but the uh, but no, and it, it really relies on a lot of thinking on your feet, not being cognizant of the fact that you are just in, uh, uh, in, uh, how you look, that you're you know you you can't rely on that. You have to think sort of outside your own little physical box. Yeah, you don't have that visual medium right. to, 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 I, to, to get your uh, emotions right. across. It's all audio. Right, and, and I, I really like that challenge. It also is cool because, like we're talking about turtles, man, I'm old enough to be your father, and I'm doing a Ninja Turtle again. And I was a victim of my own ageism when uh, Nickelodeon called for me to read. I was kind of reticent at first, not because I was arrogant, but because I thought I was too old. And the producers are like, no, man, we know exactly who you are. We don't care how old you are. We know that you were Pinky. We know that you were Carl. We know that you were Arthur on the tick. We know that you were the mask. We know oh, that wow. you were Mighty Max. We so know you said that, Arthur, I just lit up against You know, sorry. all that stuff. We know all of that. But we just think you'd be cool for Donnie if you don't mind reading. I said, well, no, I don't mind reading. I just, I'm kind of concerned about my age. I was the one that had the problem. They didn't. And so at the, like the fourth or fifth callback, I'm in a room with John Cryer and, and, um, uh, Jason Bateman and all these wonderful actors who don't need the money. Jason, just, Jason Bateman? Oh, yeah, they, just want, they wanted to be on Turtles, man. Are you kidding? It's not about the money. It's like, sure, we'll audition. We want yeah, to be on absolutely. Jason Biggs and, you know, Sean Astin. They all audition. Really? Yeah. And so I got the job, and it was really, I'm glad I got, I'm glad I got up out of my own way. Because, and you're now our Donatello. Right. It's crazy. So my that's favorite a great, character. That's a weird, yeah. My favorite character. That's a really yeah. great um, example of of not being limited by your own perception of what your shortcomings may be. So once I was able to get out of my own way and trust the fact that the producers wanted me to, you know, be involved, it worked out fine. Very cool. Yeah. I heard, I, one more thing before we, we, we let you go. I heard you talk about farming earlier. Are you yeah. interested in farming? Well, I'm, I'm interested because there's a, a gentleman that I uh, spoke to from the Thumb area who has a farm. And I'm only interested because uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm a relatively well-read guy, and okay. the reason I bring that up is because um, I'm fascinated when I meet so many people from so many different walks of life by traveling around the world talking about my work, that I was I met a really sweet guy who he and his wife brought their grandkids out. Actually, and, the gentleman right back there. Yes, yeah, and we were yes. talking about he's got a farm up in the Thumb area, and um, it was really cool talking to him about how... He's got a, a ten or fifteen thousand bucks worth of hay that's rotting on the ground because you guys have had too much water. Yeah. We are in a drought in California, and I know people that are. I, I, I don't know. I read about people who are having to sell their cattle because the cost of hay out there has risen three hundred percent. So it's really fascinating how you meet people from all the walks of lives, and you you see people getting bent out of shape about, oh my God, milk is really expensive, and here's a guy who's a dairy farmer. And he's going, yeah, well, I'm, milk is doing really well, but corn isn't doing so well because, um, uh, you know, the cost of corn and, and, the, and I'm going to have to sell a certain amount of it that was, emitted, that was supposed to go for making ethanol and 
There's, there's just so much more to it than people so, it's realize. It's so intertwined, yeah, exactly. exactly, Conrad. We're and very so, balanced. We are. One you thing want to off, hear, and it's all yeah, off. Yeah, and, yep. and people complain about this, or, but, and you want to say you, you should talk to a guy who really farms for a living. It is a very difficult circumstance. I volunteer at an urban farm. Good here for in Detroit, you, man. And it's rough. Even it's just tough. volunteering, it's and it's hard. We have many cows and goats, and we have it's eleven hard. acres of. And land. when you look at in guys Detroit who, too, it's yeah. right in, and when you, seven miles. When you see people who farm for it's a rough. living, man, oh man, they're they're at the mercy of the elements. They're at the yeah. mercy of the market. Of the, Which the, in Michigan recently has been. I used to bale hay. Oh, I used to live in the country. Yeah. I grew up north of here. Way up yeah. North. And bailing hay, I was a city kid. And my parents were like, kick, we're gonna man. we're gonna we're gonna move to the country. Yeah. So I, we moved from Metro Detroit all the way up north. And my one of my first jobs was bailing hay. Good. And they shoot them out. That's and it's tough. Like, you don't know what you're doing. No man, you get killed. Yeah. No, I, it I was a you, it I, was a rough summer, it's, but it's, it's, it's fascinating to talk to people who really have jobs like that 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 are are really salt of the earth people who work so hard. And, and the stuff we take for granted about how we get milk and produce and, and the cost of, it takes to get that to market. We're such an instant gratification we, society that I think we lose right. track of, of how much goes into what we get. We, I, it, the coolest thing agree. is been teaching kids that the stuff that they see in, and this is a totally different show, but I'm just really excited. No, but yeah. it's, it's this is where This is where it comes from. This yeah. is where your meat comes from. Yeah. This is where spaghetti comes from. Listen, man, I totally this get it. And all of a sudden, the, the price of meat tanks... And you have to get rid of a lot of your beef cattle because the cost of hay has now risen 300%. And you're going, I can't afford to pay these cattle. So I have to slaughter them now to take whatever I can get out of yep. them because I can't all of a sudden sell beef for 50 bucks a pound no. because nobody will buy it. It's a very tough circumstance. So I was really grateful to get a chance to talk to this gentleman. Yeah, a gentleman named, uh, I believe his name was Dale. And I, I'm yeah, going to cool. introduce him to Lucas after we're done because Lucas, like I said, does the urban farming. It was farming. fascinating. But just yeah. trying, to get in, uh, trying to get you in to introduce, introduce you to Lucas and get us on the show yeah. for, with you. Uh, you know, I didn't want to interrupt. No. You, I, you, on top of being such an incredible me. talent, like just listen to that conversation. You're an incredible individual. Too. Thank, Thank you, buddy. You so That's much very kind for comment. being on the show. It is my We're not pleasure. kicking you off, but no, we do have other guests. It was amazing. Yeah, it's Thank amazing. This is great talking finally to you. meeting you. You're right. We've been seeing in the Facebook posts like Rob Paul's is oh, going to be there. Uh, you guys are terrific, and thank you very much and to the listeners. Thank you for thank you from like everybody for making our childhood. Yes, what it is. As rich as, as it was. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, and you can all come up to the water tower anytime. Thanks a lot, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. One more time for Rob Paul's, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over here. And make sure. Yeah, you okay. yeah you could do that. Um, Thanks, I'm guys. just gonna I'm gonna try to settle down because that was one of the coolest experiences in my entire life. Uh, no problem, sir. Sorry, we have a little bit of an audience probably for Robert Paulson, which he absolutely deserves. But just to give you guys a heads up. You want to listen to this and anything else that the Rack Show does? Go to theRackShow.com. It's where all of our content is. Rob Paulson, yeah. right? I know. You can also follow us on Instagram and on. Uh, Twitter at The Rack Show, which is all one word. So, Joe Mar, thank you for crawling underneath us and not getting into the shot. Appreciate that. Now, I think we're ready for our next set of guests. Who are our next guests? Who are guests? nice enough to wait. We actually had them on Bob first. Paulson. I know, dude. Trust me. You're talking. You're